Good evening, everyone. My name is Esther Moshiri. Extremely excited to be back on the Mentors Fala. Uh, for those that are new, this is the space where we come together to speak about matters that are very dear to our hearts. We started around end of April, having all experienced the effects of COVID-19 and realizing that as an organization, many youth are affected and not just youth, even ourselves, those who are working, things have changed. Our workplaces have changed. We now have to learn how to work from home. And so with all these challenges, we said, can we start having conversations of what is happening? How can we together grow and just walk with each other as we each figure out how to deal with the issues of COVID? And so, as eMentoring Africa, uh, an organization that has a big passion for mentorship, we reached out to our friends and uh, six of us came together and said, let's do this. So we have been meeting. We started off very radically, and I want to use the word radical on purpose because our mentor today is a very radical guy. So we took a very radical move, and what we chose to do is to have about three to four sessions a week. So on Monday, on Wednesday, on Friday, and we even included a Tuesday where we would come together and we would actually speak about uh, issues and different topics and get the people who came to the parlor very engaged. After we probably have done up to 36 sessions by now, and we decided let's take a break, let's evaluate our move. Let's see the impact that we are having on uh, everyone. And so with that, we have been on a break for a month. And it, during that break and through the feedback that we received from most of you, we have come back, but on a different plan. We shall be meeting only once a week, every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. We will try to make this as engaging as possible, make them as exciting and interactive so that whatever topic we cover is actually able to address a need or an issue that has been raised. So today I'm very excited to have none other than our very own Hash. I like his name because it speaks also to a passion that he has. Hash is passionate about matters, sales, customer service, relationships, and how to use this in business or even at a personal level to grow yourself. There are two things I want to mention about Hash when, uh, after interacting with him now for several months, one of the things that Hash keeps repeating is that one must start with an end in mind in everything that they do. And he believes that the ultimate goal of our lives is happiness. So whatever you're doing today, if you're not happy then, I think we need to start asking ourselves, am I really doing the right thing? And then he has a quote that he's, he uses, which says, a business that is able to build lasting happiness is a business mm -hmm. that tends to grow over generations and Africa desperately needs such entrepreneurs. So that is Hash, who has over 25 years hands-on sales and business development experience working in India and 10 African markets. So Hash, without yeah. too much detail, I want to leave the floor to you so that you can pick us off on this exciting topic. I will continue admitting people, capturing the questions so that we have a full Karibu sana Hash. Thank you very much, Esther, for the elaborate introduction. Um, don't want to repeat anything. Um, uh, for those who were, uh, two questions before we start. Um, kindly uh, raise your hands if you're new to this parlor. Those who are old or have been with us for a session or two don't need to. And the second thing is I'd like to know how many entrepreneurs in the house and how many uh, hustlers like me and the job seekers in the house. Um, so we address all of them uh, equally because this subject is, is it, it touches everywhere. It's a 360 degree thing, customer service and relationship. Um, and thirdly, um, any particular 
uh, or any specific points uh, within today's agenda you, you'd like us to ad address? Um, for example, somewhere you've been struggling, you you stuck, uh, you need some clarifications. Uh, feel free. This is not a monologue, so this session is is for you. So the concerns come from you, and why we chose today's subject is. Um, before we just finished, uh, or before we went for the break, we had a couple of interesting um, discussions where we actually went through some business plans and there a couple of attendants uh, uh, or participants, I would say, who were seriously, uh, who seriously wanted us to discuss this subject. Because uh, in these times, we all realize that retaining a customer um, is, is so important. Um, and, and also, um, in terms of uh, a new business, uh, how does a new business get customers? So there are different angles to customer service and building relationships because people are, are, are cozy, they're comfortable in, in, in the existing relationship. So if you're a new businessman, uh, new in business, uh, how do you carve your niche and how do you sort of uh, differentiate uh, and get new customers, right? That is one scenario. The other scenario is, uh, we spoke about copy copy paste uh, again around business plans because um, uh, most of the businesses that we are doing now um, ninety nine percent of them uh, are already exist so if it's a copy paste business uh, there's nothing wrong doing a copy paste business it's just that how can you be different um, and one of the key differentiating factor is I think customer service and um, customer relationships so those two or three scenarios. Uh, from the entrepreneur point of view and uh, from the job seek seeker point of view I, I would love if somebody could ask me I mean I'm not in customer service so uh, why would I listen to this uh, is there anybody who thinks that way who doesn't necessarily belong to sales and customer service you do completely your profession is completely uh, different but and you're wondering uh, what could be my takeaway here uh, should I invest my 30 or 45 minutes or probably just log out and do something more fruitful. Uh, so hence, I asked um, how many of us are entrepreneurs and how many of us are job seekers to classify the two categories or, or in employment, I would say. Employment stroke job seekers. Kindly indicate as we go on. Um, so uh, let's get started. And um, I, I want to keep emphasizing this is not a monologue. This is uh, this is a this is a discussion. Um, uh, I share uh, what I've learned, and I love to hear from you uh, as I learn from you guys. So it it um, it's uh, it's going to be engaging. Um, let me start it this way while I wait for you your feedback. Um, so Hash, would you like um, people to? Would you like people to Sorry. put? Would you like people to use the chat platform to post their question, yeah. or how do you want people to engage with you? Um, they can. They, I mean, they can unmute and they can just talk, um, or they could chat. They could do a video. They could do a audio only. They could do a chat. They're free to read out. Okay. Thank you. So you can continue, and if I see a hand up, I will ask them to unmute and speak. Exactly, yeah. And if there is no hand up, it's a concern to me. So I would love a couple of people uh, actually giving me some ideas on how to guide this conversation. So um, let's start with the basics of, uh, of why customer service, uh, why the relationship why do we use the word customer service and or stroke uh, customer relations? Is um, the journey with a customer is depending on the on the kind of business that you are in um, is is usually uh, a long term journey. Um, this is what I've learned from my corporate sales or corporate business development in uh, career. Is uh, the customer is more than a transaction? Okay. Usually our focus is more around transactions. Because let's take an example, a practical example, COVID situation, uh, cash flow problems. Uh, what's your number uh, number one take is how, how do I pay my bills? Uh, how do I pay my salaries? How do I pay my rent? Stuff like that. So uh, 
we we get occupied uh, usually uh, thinking about um, about numbers uh, which is uh, figures and costs and stuff like that um, and the whole sort of uh, thinking or, or approach to business then pivots in a in a certain way because now we started uh, or we start spending more energy in those areas uh, which could give us immediate revenues um, and this is where sometimes in businesses you would see, I don't need to tell you guys, you've got plenty of examples. Uh, you go to Facebook, there are so many complaints. Uh, go to any service provider, you'll find, you, let's talk about supermarkets, let's talk about internet service providers, let's talk about banks. Everywhere we go, um, uh, in, uh, this is a hot topic. Uh, everywhere, everyone is complaining about cus poor customer services, right? So the re one of the reasons, uh, there could be several reasons. It's, I don't think anybody is uh, intentionally poor at delivering, uh, or, or intentionally, uh, I, I'm sorry to correct myself. Nobody is intentionally delivering poor customer services, right? It's just that amongst all the priorities, uh, growth, uh, sustainability, um, or whatever, um, customer service gets left along the way. Uh, sometimes it's even uh, taking things for granted. Um, uh, we think we've done it. Zuku thinks they are the number two or number one service provider, so now they can rest on, rest on their laurels. Um, they're okay. They're, their numbers are pretty well. Uh, they, they're acquiring new customers uh, as per their sales quotas, and then you know sometimes we can take it easy. So uh, if, if we if we consider all of those scenarios. Um, and there are definitely more. This is an endless discussion, but just to summarize, uh, this is where customer service gets left out. Um, customer service is is uh, is uh, is uh, is very close to me because uh, I have learned myself. I, I used to be pathetic at it. Um, I used to think a customer once he pays the check and he he, he buys the service, he's done. I must look for another. Uh, and this is a common mistake sometimes we tend to make. So I just want to touch upon a few basics. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, rather than speaking rocket science, it's it's simply nice to touch some basics because uh, it's within us. We've been through it. We realize it. We know it. And that is something that can, that, that can help us immediately, right? Uh, and w which is what we strive to deliver in these discussions is not to give you something that you'll uh, probably think and deliberate and uh, maybe wait another few months or years to use. It doesn't make any sense giving you knowledge that is not applicable today or now. Uh, this is how I would think. I wouldn't want to listen to anybody who's not relevant to me now, right? If he's relevant to me in the future, I will listen to him in the future, I guess. So customer service. Uh, uh, I've I've hinted a couple of scenarios in in uh, for entrepreneurs, for for job seekers or the ones in employment. How does customer service and uh, how does customer service help us? I mean, you, you may ask. I'm not in the customer service. Let's say I'm I'm somewhere. I'm in the banking treasury. I have nothing to do with customer service, and I'm a I'm an accountant. I'm in logistics. I manage a warehouse. Um, customer service has nothing to do with me. Right, I don't attend calls. Customers don't come see me. But in any department that you are in, uh, customer service is to me is an attitude. Okay, it's it's a soft skill that one can learn. Uh, to me, it's a life skill. Okay, customer service is attitude. It's treating people nicely. Uh, in other words, right, uh, amongst all the list of tops uh, soft skills that one must have, uh, respect people, humility. Uh, all of those to me translate to customer service. So what does customer service mean? Uh, greeting the customer, treating him nicely, he pays our bills um, after all. Uh, listening to him, l even listening, it goes a long way uh, in retaining a customer because most of the times we just want to talk and uh, try to sort of uh, close the situation or uh, diffuse the situation if it's if, if it's if it's a if it's a hot uh, sort of a scenario uh, where the customer is complaining, so by the way, sorry, Esther, still no feedback from anybody. So, uh, are we in the right direction? Um, if yes, no feedback is good feedback. Okay, we are. Maybe I can just okay. mention an experience that I had the other day on customer service. Mm -hmm. What would you say of organizations that 
when you ask for service, they tell you that they take say, five days, working days to give you the service. But yes. you wait for two weeks and the service hasn't come through. You send an email and you don't get an answer. Yes. How do you address that? Because um, some of that is we are some of the employees that are employed in those companies. So how would you speak to yes, us, yes. especially if we are the people who are, who are assigned the duty of handling clients right yeah. now? Let, let me give you a very harsh sort of an answer because I, I, I've been behind the scenes. So uh, I, I know how the kitchen looks and the kitchen is not always as clean as a, as a restaurant is, right? <laughs> so that's, that's where you get in and then you start finding cockroaches. <laughs> so the point is, uh, like I said, most of the organizations uh, tend to focus more on retaining customers or acquiring customers. So the business model is designed in such a way that the emphasis is more on the presentation or your restaurant and the seating and the ambience and the sales and the menus and the decor, right? So just speaking metaphorically, uh, your sales, uh, your BD teams, your front end teams is where the investment is. But the back end team, which is supposed to be the customer service, uh, is is very uh, is is a small is a very small proportion. So assume a scenario of a tenant of like eight is to two, uh, 80 20. 80 percent is towards acquiring, and maximum twenty percent is towards retaining. So what happens if eighty percent of the people are getting uh, customers in, uh, and only twenty percent busy retaining them or servicing them? You can imagine the workload. Okay, so you have more customers and more customer square queries to handle than your organization is capable of. That's the number one. I'm speaking of it as if I'm a customer service executive. Let's say I'm a CS executive or CS rep for uh, any of the service providers, right? This is, this is one of my problems. I know I get uh, like 25 calls in, a, in an hour, which are physically impossible, practically impossible for a person to attend, let alone follow up, right? Uh, because each call would be, a few minutes, blah, blah, blah. So uh, staffing is, is one of the major concern. Um, it's, and this is not just for the help desk. This is also, uh, this translates down to the trans technical team. Uh, because remember, we are busy, more busy installing because acquisition, uh, it's a part of acquisition. So uh, the same uh, example, if I ask you in a different way, uh, when you approach them, uh, to get that service, did they say that it will take you five working days and they never showed up in two weeks? It doesn't happen. That usually happens in 48 hours or 24 hours because at that time, you're writing the check. Mm -hmm. That's true. So uh, nobody would wait for two weeks to get a check. So you see, that's how the, I mean, this is what the customer is telling you in a way. Uh, I'm more keen on delivering you services uh, or, or acquiring a new customer than I am uh, about retaining the customer, right? This is what it, what you just said, uh, mm -hmm. and this is how I, I interpret it. So, and this is where I I, I do believe businesses go wrong. Um, I mean, in my day-to-day -day consulting, this is uh, this is a, this is an emphasis that I uh, I like to. Uh, this is an area I like to emphasize uh, with the with the CEOs. Uh, and most of the times, let me be honest, uh, they know the problems. Everybody knows the problems within the organizations. Uh, but it, it is taken for granted sometimes. It's not an area of priority because, um, I mean, you're already paying, right? You're already in. So uh, why are you so important and why the rest of, of them who are prospective customers not so important? So the, my, the focus shifts to the customer's to getting the new customers, right? Mm -hmm. This is where uh, existing customers get left out. So, but in this time, um, uh, I've seen a lot of organizations come up with a lot of strategies. I imagine automobile guys coming up with promotions because three months there was literally no automobile sales. So mm -hmm. they were coming up with campaigns for free service or free uh, service charges and we'll only charge you for parts and stuff like that. Uh, from the DT Dobies of the world, which you've never probably seen in the last two decades, right? <laughs> so necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> um, so uh, 
it, it, uh, to me, it, this translates to the organization's philosophy, and the organization's philosophy is the is a is the board's philosophy or the top management's philosophy. Uh, customer service doesn't work on its own will and wish. Sometimes we hold the customer rep in person or the department accountable, um, but they are they, they are they are some of the uh, if you look at the org structure, they are some of the most junior and the most vulnerable people and they take the blame and they take the heat for nothing it is they are guided by the management's policies uh, on how uh, how you go about escalating the issues or how you go about addressing the issues uh, because there's a lot to it uh, like i said uh, and this is where you'll find the cockroaches so i don't know if i've answered you um, you I've, have actually and uh, i'm very interested in a in a comment that has been made by john Ngogi who is talking about having a serious issue with one of the government bodies. And for the last three weeks, they have not approved a very simple thing. I don't know, John, if your connection is good and you want to elaborate a little bit about your experience. Uh, I lose my patience when, it's come, it, when it comes to government, guys. So, uh, John, you want to say something? I'm there's another one from Victor. <laughs> it, okay. uh, it is uh, yeah it's true that comment is true mm -hmm. yes uh, I, don't, I don't know that you can hear me yes we can, can you hear me no. very well can you get me yes yes go ahead uh, okay i'm saying that that is um that's a true experience that i'm going through right now mm -hmm. it's a very true experience i'm going through right now mm -hmm. Um, I'm both a government employee and, and an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So, so we are launching our, our mobile app in the, in the month of September, mm -hmm. and we needed the pin. We needed the pin, the, the, the KRA pin for a partnership, for us to be able to open banks and uh, you know and all that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine how for the last three weeks, mm -hmm. a pin, a pin that should enable you to pay taxes. Imagine. It's, it's not it's not being processed mm -hmm. simply simply because of what Hash is saying that yeah. people are not paying attention to customers mm -hmm. they, they, and and I want to agree with with the statement that you has, has just said that um, it is it is a management philosophy mm -hmm. so if the the top management are not conscious of what is happening down mm -hmm. then the the people down there are going to be blamed for nothing. But but uh, but it's it's, it's, a, it's an organizational problem, mm -hmm. and I can't agree more with what with the comments that are coming. That um, this this customer service is more than just um, passing, you know, answering uh, a customer and all that. But I think it is a spirit. It is a it is a core. Mm -hmm. It is a core business of any uh, of any organization or any any business venture. So that um, if 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 a lot of premium is paid on that. Then, then the, the dividends are higher in the overall uh, organizational uh, outfit. So for me, it's been very st stressing. I've, I've written, I've tweeted, you know, I've, I've, I've written to their management, but nothing seems to be coming. But I know where the problem is. I'm also in government. I know where the I've already been told by insiders what what the problem is, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a very sorry state of of of, of affairs. Of affairs. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, John. Uh, I can imagine I, I, I'm going through a hell of a time with NTSA, uh, and when it comes to government, I just lose my patience. So I'm very sorry about it. Uh, there's an interesting question, Victor, um, about too much automation. Um, I just want to ask to understand the question right. Is he trying to say too much automation is a problem, or how does that impact the customer? So. As I get that, uh, let me uh, automation being my subject. Uh, let me just elaborate on it on this very quickly. So, like I said, um, out of 180 people are busy retaining customers, winning customers, 20 are busy retaining, sorry, and, and servicing customers. So, uh, we already want different staff, and hence the need for automation and AI and robotics and chatbots and stuff like that. Because imagine uh, Safaricom if they were to have physical uh, manning the call center uh, for about 25 or 20 is it 25 or 26 million subscribers they would have about probably 25,000 people sitting there uh, in a shift uh, taking a ratio of one percent uh, customer to uh, attendant right 
which is impossible. So you're talking about three ships, which is 75,000 people uh, in, in 24 hours. Hence the need for automation. Secondly, a lot of tasks can be automated. They are mundane. I lost my pin. I want to regenerate my pin. Uh, I want to report a wrong M-Pesa transfer, uh, stuff like that. You don't need to physically engage with a, with a human being uh, for like 70 or 80% of the services, right? Um, however, the backend processes is, is, is where the issue is because human intervention is required. The first level is automated. You don't need, you don't speak to Harsh or Esther. You, you, you've dealt with the chatbot, but the chatbot is not going to solve your problem. It's just receiving your problem, right? So there's a, there's a, there's a chain in, in, let's use Safaricom as an example. It would go to the technical help desk. There's a level one support. There's a level two support. There's a level three support. Level three is being the team support, the field support, because level one would look at the servers level and escalate it. If it's going beyond them, level two is going to uh, have some administration administrator access. I mean, you have to have the safety and the user safety and the data safety in mind. So it's only limited people who will look at it. So the thousand complaints is there in the data center. Looking at these complaints already 10 days. Uh, I believe one of the reasons you're not getting your pin is that. And then he realizes there's a cable cut. So he's asking the level, level three guy to go and actually check out if there's a cable cut in Parklands. Why is why are we getting complaints? So they have a dashboard the way they see where all these coming, complaints coming from. Uh, is only one complaint in that area. There are 10, which could be a physical. So I'm just giving you a practical scenario. This is where it takes weeks and weeks to sort out a problem. Because for one problem, Safaricom is not going to dispatch a car. They don't have the they don't have the access for one sale. They will, okay. Any organization for one sale, they will make sure the salesperson comes and knocks your doors and collects the check. But for service, it is not going to happen. It is a cost, all right. So that's I'm talking about the mentality, uh, and this is how it happens. So too much automation. Yes, uh, sometimes you miss the human touch, but sometimes some systems, if it's well organized, um, if it's well planned, customer service is a plan, the, the processes, like I mentioned, there are processes for every organization, for every service or product that you deliver or maintain or, or repair different. For example, Hotpoint has a different process and Safaricom would be totally different because they are different businesses. So their customer service processes, internal processes are designed accordingly, right? Uh, yes, um, similarly, uh, automobile would be, would be different. Um, uh, banking is different. So automation is required, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Um, you, I mean, it, it would be impossible for you to uh, get across the customer service at all, uh, I would say, without automation. Um, any more comments? I see a very long one from Wilson. Is, is there Before a question? that, we had a comment from uh, Sophie, who was agreeing with you in saying that staffing okay. is one of the issues for customer-facing companies. And so yeah. perhaps just to address that issue of, uh, of staffing, because perhaps in this uh, parlor today, we have a number of young people who are either looking for a job to work in a customer service uh, desk. And indeed, Wilson says he's a customer experience executive. So he handles a lot of okay. customers. So oh, fantastic. When, yeah. when, uh, when Sophie talks about staffing being an issue, I'm thinking how this can actually affect SMEs because in Kenya, we are seeing a lot of encouragement for most people to get into business. Today, mm -hmm. through our social media, we can see people starting online shops and you're selling products and everything. But yes. how do you harness the power of customer service so that you give enough attention to uh, getting the customers and retaining those that you have? Because if you retain, then they bring you more business. So how do you balance that now that we have an experience of, of a how a Safaricom works? They are good at coming to get business and a check, but very poor at yeah. responding to customer problems. Um, let, let, me start it, uh, let me start answering this in a, in a, in a slightly different way. So I, I want to first answer Wilson. Um, and, and customer service, I, I, having worked there uh, with the teams, I know what they go through, right? Uh, it's not... It's, one of the most difficult and underrated or thankless jobs, first of all, right? Uh, nobody thanks the customer service. Uh, most of the credit goes to the salespeople, 
uh, because they bring in numbers. So Wilson, hang in there. You're doing a difficult job. Uh, and sometimes depending on where you are, it's an impossible job. But what's in for me? So if I'm Wilson, if I'm working in a on a customer service desk um, and uh, receiving these 20 or 30 frustrating calls in a day, right? Because uh, nobody calls the customer service when things are things are rosy and things are fine. So like first things, uh, they're usually firefighting, right? It only now the degree of the fire varies, right? Uh, so they are busy handling unpleasant scenarios. And this is where the job is very, very challenging. And sometimes I, I've seen guys quit in a week uh, or two weeks, depending on where you are uh, and the kind of support that you get from your, from your organizations. Um, so uh, let me give you a couple of hints or uh, ideas as an encouragement um, to build a career in customer service, okay? Like I said earlier, customer service is a soft skill. Customer service is an attitude. It's not a title alone, okay? So customer service, if you become customer service, is rather than trying to act or trying to be a customer service agent between eight and five or whatever shift that you do, uh, those two are different scenarios, right? What I mean is you walk, talk, and breathe as a customer service guy. You feel for the customer. It's within you to solve the customer. And then you automatically uh, stand out from the rest of your teams. That's number one. Uh, and believe me, the customer feels it. Uh, however agitated he is, I've seen um, customers getting to the extent where they start to they, they start knowing the this this see the names of the agents who are very good at service and they look for those agents. They would only call Safaricom. Let me use Safaricom as an example again, only to look for Esther. Otherwise they would hang up. I don't want to talk to anybody. You guys are a waste of time. If Esther is on leave, I will call tomorrow. All right. So what are you doing by delivering excellent customer services? You're becoming sort of a brand. All right. Um, this automatically helps retain customers. Um, this customer service, let me say, is a very thin line between winning and losing the customer. Okay, so the poor customer service, the guy is immediately going to drop off uh, uh, 10 calls I made, nobody answered, let me go JTL, Zuku, XYZ, or let me change my bank, or let me uh, figure out another way. So uh, there, is a, there is a career to be built in customer service alone, I mean, as, as a as a CS, because we know uh, Esther, in this country to get a job is a problem and nobody wants to usually do a difficult job, uh, a hard job and, and sales and CS is a very hard job. So if you're prepared to take this, um, first of all, you have a career. Second of all, any business, any profession that you are in, like I mentioned to you when I started, why do you worry about customer service? For example, if you're in logistics, warehouse, finance, treasury, uh, manufacturing, you're an engineer. Um, I again connected, this is an attitude, right? If, if you're caring enough, customer necessarily doesn't mean he's an external customer, okay? What I mean to say is customer doesn't mean that he's outside your organization. His customer can be even within the organization, not necessarily a transaction, but he's your customer. So if I'm in the, if I'm in the manufacturing, if I'm the head of production, who is my customer? The factory is my customer, right? I am delivering a product. So the rest of the admin staff or the sales staff, they depend on me for my timely service or my timely product output. You get my point? If I don't produce anything, they don't sell anything. If they don't listen to my feedback, if I don't listen to my feedback, they keep getting a, a, a product that doesn't meet the market needs. So I'm fulfilling internal customer or internal requirements. So please, uh, if you're thinking customer as in an external customer only, outside the organization, please think again. Customers are internal as well, okay? So for example, if you're, if you're a finance guy, you're writing the checks, you're an FC, uh, all those guys on your payroll, they are practically your customers. You're serving them, right? Uh, let alone the word customer, you're serving them. So service, okay? Whether it is a customer service, whether it's an internal service, uh, you have to be service oriented. Uh, and this is why, again, I emphasize that customer service or service is an attitude, okay? Uh, if you, 
I'm sure you, again, you guys are working somewhere, you are entrepreneurs, so you have teams. You would relate to me. There are some guys who will go out of your way. The HR guy goes out of the way. Oh, Ash, you didn't receive your salary. Let me call the bank. Let me find out why, why, why. It's happened from my side. But then again, there are some guys, oh, I've done it from my side. Can you check your rank and go? Okay, you let me know if not done. Okay. What, what was that? That was service, right? And you are his customer in a way. Um, so whether he's a customer or not, I think um, if, if you have, if we build that attitude of delivering excellent services in whatever we do, because definitely an organization, uh, in an organization, an output um, of each individual, it makes a huge difference. Um, sometimes we tend to think uh, KRA is so big, uh, so what difference does, does one person make? Wrong, completely wrong. One person makes a huge difference. And that is why those customers who have got in touch with you will definitely look for you. Even internally, people will look for you. Hey, Harsh, this HR guy is not uh, cooperating. Uh, you always help me. So the guy will actually go to the FC because the FC is very helpful. Uh, Abu Harsh, can you talk to the HR guy? My salary has not been paid. He doesn't listen. He's a very tough guy. So maybe can you talk to him nicely and then sort my problem out? So what is the FC doing? FC is just doing a good service, right? And those guys who deliver a good service internally, they always get the attention. Secondly, it, it, it's a bit of a pain also because they get all the complaints. People always go to them. But then these guys are leaders and that is why they take the initiative to sort of solve customer or uh, colleagues problems, right? So just to summarize, um, Esther, uh, customer service. Um, this is one thing I, I, I really um, wanted to bring out for the lack of better words is, don't just tag services to customers, okay? Uh, if you can put it better for me, uh, I would really appreciate. But if you are a service-oriented person in any uh, business, any vocation, job seeker, hustler, or in employment, you'll go two steps ahead. This is what I wanted to bring up. Wow. Thank you very much, yeah. Hash, for that. Uh, John continues to ask a question. And he's saying, you're raising very important points. And he's asking, what is the mentality of the person that he's serving? What should the men their mentality be? Do they consider it a good job or how do they view it? So it is the, yes, the company may have its own way of doing it, like Safaricom and you are giving a good example of, unless we see so many complaints in this area, then we don't deploy people to go and service yeah. that area. Yeah. But, how should me, the customer serving person, yep. what should my mentality be? Because one, I, I've been employed to help this company grow. And number two, you give a good example of there are people who will call and say, I want to speak to a particular person yep. because they were served right. Yep. So can you speak to that mentality issue, yep. the customer executive? Um, okay, uh, very important question is, why do I be nice, right? Uh, what, because I know um, I'll get all the calls, and then as you build the brand, it's become it's 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 sometimes difficult or impossible to maintain the brand because you're nice. Yes, uh, Esther is very nice, uh, but then if Esther, the moment es Esther escalates, that that team that's supposed to back her, uh, she knows 99% of the time she's going to be let down. So now, how do I get back to her? She's it's a nightmare, right? If, if, if you're in that position, you nice, the customers were happy, you dealt with the customer, the call is over, right? But then he's expecting that service. So, um, first of all, when you take, uh, um, um, we go back to the call, be nice, um, be genuine, be humble, and be honest, but, do the, uh, but just, um, weigh your honesty, right? Don't be utterly honest. Don't say the service is done for two weeks. You're not going to have cables. Because I, I, I'm sorry, as much as you love honesty, it's not going to work. It goes against the customer retention. You, you, you may be shown the door the next day for being too honest. So just try to balance it. Sometimes just listening to the customer, uh, I, I would say, um, solves 80% of the problem. So if the customer is angry, he's upset, he's shouting on you, just listen to him, okay? Don't please put the phone down. That's the worst thing you can do. Listen to him. Secondly, if he's complaining, he's not complaining about you. 
if, if, if I'm shouting at Esther, it, my frustration is not about Esther in particular. Esther is the person accepting or receiving my call. My frustration is about her organization. So there's nothing personal that Esther needs to think or feel about uh, Anybody else who's paying for a service and expects would complain. So don't take it personally, right? First of all, so be humble, listen, don't take it personally. Be honest. Thirdly, try to go out of your way to solve the customer problem as much as you can. I know you can't pick up the van and hit the road and try to dig the cable. That's not your job. That's not what I mean. But there are some people who go out of their way. This again is um, regardless of any profession, right? Um, you go out of your way. Ask the technical teams. Remember you, this guy from uh, Esther is, is in Ruaraka. Which team is going there? Hey, you're going there. This side, can't you pivot? Uh, uh, you know, I, I've seen people. Um, you, remember, you have to fight internally as well, right? You can't just, uh, you, you can't, uh, uh, how do I put it? Um, oh, uh, you, you can't just pass the buck. Oh, I received the call, Esther. Uh, uh, now I, I, I forwarded that request to my uh, level one service team. Uh, this lady from this area, uh, kindly attend her whenever you go there. Right? So I was nice, I was humble, I was very nice. Um, I, I heard Esther, but then did I follow up on her uh, concern? No, I just left it because uh, this is not my job. Right? This is why I emphasize um, go out of your way and make sure that services delivered to her. It's difficult, right? So what we do normally is uh, on a pen or, or you normally have a pen and paper, make a list of your top customers as you receive the calls, you have 10 calls, these areas, and then it, it barely takes a few minutes for us to follow up and escalate. So it's like I said, again, it's an attitude. Service is an attitude. It depends on you. You can go as far as you want. And then I want to mention one thing to John is, uh, why do I do all this? I'm just a customer service agent. Uh, 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 nobody cares about me. But believe me, if you do this consistently for a few months or a few years, tomorrow you'll be a manager. Definitely the time they're looking uh, for a manager, either from internal sourcing or whatever, people will talk about you. Nothing goes unobserved. And other thing is contrary. If something is not observed uh, or somebody doesn't appreciate you, doesn't mean that you devalue yourself. Okay, you still have that good attitude. You need to keep that good attitude with you because if not Safaricom, somebody will pick you because those customers, they will talk to somebody and those somebody will talk to their teams internally. So good service, as much as bad service, doesn't go unnoticed forever, right? So it's a super career building uh, soft skill. Like I said, it's attitude is delivering service. Um, be it an entrepreneur, hustler, job seeker, uh, somebody sitting in the hot seat of a CS, um, it's a super career to have. It's only a few months that you have, go, you have to go through. So oh, yeah. thank you, Hash, for that. I want to give this opportunity to anybody who has a, a question that they want to speak out. Uh, please unmute yourself and ask of Hash if you've not typed it and you've not addressed it so that we are able to also manage time and have a few minutes to wrap up. But it would be great for us to listen to, to people. Wilson, I know you said you work for Safaricom. I don't know whether what Hash has mentioned actually speaks to what you do. Wilson, would you like to unmute yourself and uh, say something? It's good for Hash to know that He's speaking to, uh, to real people who are addressing these issues and what you face. Maybe your own personal experience would be great. He says, yes, it does. If you could kindly just unmute and speak, that would be great. Yes, Wilson. Anybody else in the meantime, yeah, okay. Wilson, I see you have unmuted yourself. We can't hear you. If you could kindly speak and share your experience. If not, as he prepares, is there anyone else with a question that they'd like to ask Hash based on what they have? 
hard. The other thing Harsh Media would want to ask is, customer service is not just for a person that is sitting there as the customer service representative. I want to think this is a skill, and you call it a soft skill. It's something that all of us should actually have. If I'm an entrepreneur yes. and I am uh, in agribusiness, I need to have that yes. skill to be able to do it. So if I don't yes. know how to, how can I come to look for help? And is that a service that you offer as harsh? If anybody in this parlor today would want uh, to have a one-on-one -on -one with you, is that something that you can assist yes. them? Maybe you can speak to that. Yes, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they can link up with you directly. Um, and then we can, we, we can figure a way out to uh, sort of find what the challenge is and then we can tailor something for them in specific. Yeah, because my, my thinking is that when you're starting up as an entrepreneur, you, you need, you, sometimes you want to do it all, but there are some of us who are not born with the customer service language yes. or skill and so it is something from what mm -hmm. i'm hearing you mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. it is something that is critical for you to succeed absolutely it's a maker it, it it makes or breaks the business or, or whatever as long as i i believe as long as you're interacting with another human being uh, service is, is is important even let's say um I want to go as far as within the family. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some kids who are, we call them or we tag them good kids, bad kids. You ask a kid, can you go buy uh, just the kibanda next to 100 meters? Can you go buy the bread? No, mama, I'm busy. I'm playing my games. What, what, what? What is that? That bad service. Interesting. So it starts yeah, from so home. It, it starts from home. Yeah. And some kid, you wake him up in the middle of the night, you ask him, go buy a bread. Doesn't have any problems, goes out of the way. And he goes and walks 100 meters picks up a loaf of bread and comes. Boy, that is attitude, right? So now you put these two guys uh, in a work scenario and just imagine who's going to deliver better service. The good kid, definitely. The good kid, naturally. So it, this is why I call it a critical life skill or attitude or aptitude or whatever it is. is, is so it's, as long as you're hitting another human being, you're dealing with another human being is, is important. Otherwise, you will not go far. Wow. That's very interesting. I, I, I didn't think about it starting from parenting when we have young kids or when we are still in school, that you can actually nurture some yeah. of these skills and perfect them so that by the time you're going into the workplace or into yeah. entrepreneurship, you're actually an yeah. expert. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we teach them attitude to be nice, to be humble, uh, to listen, which is if if they pick it all up it's it's service at the end of the day so um would service be an adjective or verb i'm i'm not too sure maybe dr Harry professor can correct me my english is uh is not my first language but it is a byproduct of something um, which is which to me is uh, caring and uh, uh, humble and uh, you know stuff like that in terms of the in, in terms of life skill so if I'm not caring uh, as a person in nature, mm -hmm. CS is something that I'll not be very good at. <laughs> That's very true. And actually, Lizzie has a question. Lizzie, I will allow you to unmute your mic kindly and ask the question. Okay. Thank you, Esther. And thank you, Harsh, uh, for the insights. Um, I, I wanted to find out um, during this time of coronavirus, um, so some of us are, are business people and like me, I've been in events. So I've, I've lost most of my customers uh, because there are no events, there's nothing much we are doing. So for, like from much, we've not been in touch. So I was just wondering how, how do I get them back? Like, do I have to wait until Corona is over or what do I do? Or do I try something else? I don't know. Wow, um, great question. Let, let me ask you. Let, let me ask you a question. Um, as much as uh, I, I can feel the pain uh, for businesses that were heavily customer focused or customer engaged, like yours. Mm -hmm. uh, naturally, there are no events. 
But um, speaking of customer service, since March, have you been in touch with your key customers? Just a few, March, April, then after that, now there was really nothing much to talk about. Because what okay. we do, we, we also hire catering utensils for okay. like restaurants and uh, hotels when they have in-house uh, functions and all that. So when the corona came in, the functions like stopped. Yes. Anyway, they were banned. Eh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I haven't been in touch with them per se. Okay. Um, was it because uh, there was no feedback from their side? They just said, uh, Lizzie, we'll call you when we need you. Um, for now, we're just home. Or you sort of uh, gave up. I'm sorry to ask you that hard question. Because <laughs> it happens. Right? No, no, no. Like sometimes on WhatsApp, yeah. I'll say hi, hi, like that. Yeah. You know, how is it going? Fine. We're still waiting, mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, one of the things that uh, I, I would like to suggest uh, you do is COVID, non-COVID, is always have a bunch of customers whom you trust, okay? I don't know how long you've been in business. How long you've been in this business? Like from last year, that's when I stopped uh, eight to five. So I haven't been there much, but much. I had just okay. started building up the, the clientele. Okay. Uh. okay. So even if you have one or two, it doesn't matter. The, the number doesn't matter. But as long as you have one or two, the point I'm trying, I want to make is get customer feedback. So uh, I, I should be in a position to say, um, or maybe befriend the customer, all right? So what I would do is uh, imagine you are uh, you're my customer. I'll just say, Lizzie, uh, listen, my business is in a mess. Eh? So, uh, you know, you're my customer, uh, you're my first customer. So I treat you like my sister, like my, like my mother. And I really want your advice here is, um, can you suggest what could I do uh, in this COVID situation uh, that could have some value uh, to you? Uh, so maybe if you're doing some house parties, um, I uh, don't think that you need service only for like a big number. I could even do a small number. So can you just help spread my uh, sort of service within your circle or maybe just keep me in mind something like that or give me a feedback right um sometimes we shy uh, away from asking from feedback um so even if your business is is going well uh everything is fine feedback is still important but in certain situations because customers will give you an idea or oh, oh, one of my friends did this party why don't you try and do this uh uh somebody was trying to do a birthday only 15 but but they were wondering who's going to uh, you know, uh, which event manager is going to be involved in a small thing like that. Uh, sometimes customer also trend, uh, tends to have his own assumptions, uh, right? Because um, why would I call Lizzie all the way uh, only for 10 customers and I'm in Karen and you're in the other, uh, on, on the other side of town, it's going to be inconvenient. So sometimes discussion or just having conversations um, helps remove or, you know, or those assumptions. It's Oh, oh, I know. Oh, Lizzie is open even for 10 people. Uh, I'll keep you in mind. That's fine. So even if you're having a kitty party, what uh, uh, just a, a couple of families coming in, I, I wouldn't mind. So feedback is number one. Uh, number two is just keep looking around, right? You have some assets. You have some uh, services to offer. On, um, how can you pivot um, within the business, outside the business? This is something we had done uh, previously. Uh, it's a, it's a fascinating, uh, fascinating discussion to have. Is uh, is do you have a do you possess be, beyond event management? Do you possess any other skill that can be brought on the table in this on this in this time? Is is something that you need to think about? Okay. Okay. Mm. Great. Thank you, Lizzie. I hope that has been uh, helpful. Yeah. And uh, should you. you have any other question, one of the things we want to do is. After any of these sessions, if you want a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I will share with you our contacts now so that you are able to get in touch with us. And uh, we will be able to get to connect you with Hush because Hush does consultancy services and customer service and uh, in such areas. So feel free because we realize this one hour is just enough to to start the conversations but yeah. people may not be able to ask all the questions that they have so hash is available to talk to you and 
to see how he can work with you. And I do feel you, Lizzie, because I have a sister who is in event planning and uh, mm. this has totally affected her. And so she's currently looking at another service. You know, she realized that people are actually going into yeah. interior design and she has a skill in interior design. So she has removed that skill and is she is offering that now as a service. So okay. that's another thing that you can look at. What else can you use? If one business is affected, maybe there's something else that people are looking for out there. Yeah. John wants to make a comment, Esther. Yes, please. John, go ahead. Yes, Esther, you, you just you just picked my mind mm -hmm. uh, immediately with the, with the comment that you made mm -hmm. about uh, looking for something else that one can do. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is very critical. At this moment, it's very, very critical that people become, become more creative mm -hmm. and become, um, become, become bold. I think, I think one of the things is that um, you, people fear to, to begin something new because of um, the, the fact that they don't know how to begin again or they fear beginning again. But at this time with the COVID situation, uh, that's very, very critical. And therefore, I can agree with what you've just said about what is this other skill that you possess mm -hmm. that you can actually be able to monetize it, that you can be able to make it into, into um, something that can be able to, to, to make a living for you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and for me, I have an example of Churchill, Churchill Live, the way he has, he has actually also re-engineered his Churchill Live show exactly. from having a big audience mm -hmm. for, to now taking it into a different direction. We still enjoy Churchill show, but mm -hmm. with a different touch. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, part of, that's an example of re-engineering um, the service provision if you've already been in service provision. Yeah. We are in September launching um, a service also that again is, um, is, is informed by the problems of COVID, the problem of congestion, the problem. So, so th there are opportunities that one can be able to look at and, and see what they mean to them. And, and therefore, we'll be more willing to share even as you look into some of those things going yeah. forward, just for the interest of time. Wow. Thank you very much, yeah. John. Maybe, Hash, I would allow you to make your final remarks so that we are mindful of time. Uh, I'm sure there was something that you probably would have wanted to say before we close the session. I just wanted to add on to John's comment is sometimes uh, is something I realized personally is when you're wondering what am I good at, it's good to ask your family and especially sometimes your kids because uh, remember kids are unbiased, they're innocent, they'll just tell you that you're good at cooking. <laughs> There you go. Uh, you're an architect, but your daughter tells you you're good at cooking, you're good at something. Uh, don't feel shy asking your family and sibling or, or your, your kids. Uh, as much as they're young, they're, they're very observant of, of you. Okay, great. Yeah. I have seen a comment. I know, Wilson, we had asked you to speak earlier, but you had a challenge with connectivity. You are able to speak now? Yes, I can. Okay, we wanted you to share your experience as a customer service uh, executive uh, to some of the insights that have been given by Hash. What's your take on that? We, we can give you maybe a minute to comment. Yes, I can talk about that briefly. Yes. I worked as a customer experience at Safaricom for some years now, and basically what I've learned about the customer service and the retention of customers the first thing is that you have to put yourself in the shoes of a customer and allow the customer also to deliver their point. When the customer has a problem, the most important thing as a customer representative is to listen. So that you listen to the problem of the customer and ensure that you make a follow-up to resolve the customer's problem. Because any time you try to react and they're responding as if, you want to show the customer that you understand more than understanding. Many of them tend to be irritated. So basically creating a good rapport with customers is the only thing that retains customers in a company. Mm -hmm. And they consider it as a front line with the people who ensures that the customers feel good about the services of a company and they also they continue using the services. So what I have learned for the few days, for the years that I've been at the company at Safaricom is that we represent the company. We represent the product of the company. Yeah. And we are to sell the company out there by doing by ensuring that we listen to the customers well. 
first thing is listening. Mm -hmm. And also ensuring that you resolve the customer's issue. Because you find that, for example, a customer calls and has an issue that has lasted, has disturbed him or her for about two days, then you still tell the same same customer that they have to escalate and then you wait for 24 hours. That one irritates customers. It's, be it's better you tell a customer, I'll call back so that you ensure that again you make a follow-up. Mm -hmm. And when you make a follow-up, a customer feels appreciated and will continue feeling like now this is the company that gives me attention. And mm -hmm. that customer can never leave your company. That will always bring more customers to your company and then you have continue growing your customer base. Yeah. That is probably what I can say because I had one minute. I may not have much time to speak, <laughs> but that's what I can say. Thank you very much. That's a very, very good point. And at least I know you're speaking from experience because that's something that you do. So thank you for that yeah. feedback. Do we have My anybody job. else burning to say something before we close and we make our final announcements? Going once, going twice, it's gone. Okay, this is our closing announcement. Uh, as we end the Mentors Parlor, we would like to get your contact. We have a list, a database, where we communicate uh, upcoming sessions. And secondly, as I said, as we started, this session is recorded. We will edit it so that it is, uh, we cut off some of the areas that you are not able to hear us. And then we shall put it up on our YouTube channel. We will send you a link to it and you can listen to it, you can replay, you can share with more people. Uh, in addition, as an organization, we do offer uh, mentorship services to, to individuals, to young people. Our target is the youth from ages 13 to 35. And we are coming up with exciting products for, for the youth for the young professionals that are getting into the industry, even for parents. Right now, you probably have uh, a student in the university, maybe a candidate, and you're wondering, how do I get these people engaged and active so that they avoid any of these very harmful behaviors we are seeing in society? So those are some of the areas that we address as an organization. So please invite people to join us at the parlor every Tuesday at 7.30. As you give us your contacts, it would be great for you to also tell us what else would you like us to address? We do have topics that we have lined up, but maybe there's something that it's really burning, maybe hash touched it a little bit, but didn't really go into details. Throw it into the chat platform. We will pick it up. And in our subsequent sessions, we shall be able to address them. Or we can maybe even create another channel and have a discussion on that particular one so yep. feel free to share with us uh, an issue that is burning you that is affecting the youth particularly during this time of covid and beyond i like that lizzie told us about her and her business so if you're having a challenge as a business person as an entrepreneur this is your space let's use it to talk to interact with each other and we shall be glad that we held each other's hand and survived uh, COVID-19. Yeah. So it is now, uh, what is it today? It's, it's already almost nine o'clock. I want to respect your time. Thank you for your time. We will have, Hash will be with us next Tuesday, but another mentor from the Mentors Parlor will be speaking on a different topic. We will announce it in our different channels. If you received this invitation through email, we will use the same channel to communicate with you. But you now have our email address, info at ementoringafrica.or.ke. Please get in touch. And we will be happy to journey with you, with your youth, with your siblings. This is a calling and we are passionate about this. Hush, you've done it. I love your passion in customer service, in sales, it's always a pleasure listening to you. So from me and on behalf of the Mentors Parlor and eMentoring Africa, it's a big thank you. Have a beautiful night. May God bless you. And see you again next Tuesday, 7.30, same place. 
the link is the same, it doesn't change. We have a permanent link on Zoom. So please maintain that link.